Duda. A Duda. Hey. Condensation is energy. Yes. Dissipation is force. You know, humanity always has everything upside down and backwards, you know? When we think of energy, yeah, we think of like, for example, a uh, plutonium or nuclear whew, mushroom cloud, right? Well, that's not energy, that's actually force. That's the dissipation of energy, yeah? When energy is released, that's, that's not energy, that's... That's the release of energy, which is force. For example, right, what would be energy? Like a softball-sized lump of silvery plutonium or uranium in your hands. But people don't think that's energy. Well, that's not energy. Energy is a mushroom cloud. It's like, no, you have everything upside down and backwards. Same is true of gravity. The one thing I keep hearing, and I see it in Wikipedia, I, I see it all over the place. As I say, gravity is a force, the force of gravity. Gravity is not only not a force, it's the complete opposite of the force. Do you actually think there's any force involved in that? I love it when people leave me in the uh, comment in the comment section. They say that gravity doesn't exist. Well, superficially, they're correct. But, I mean, the phenomena that we're looking at here does exist. But what is that phenomena? Point nonspecific mutual mass acceleration. Now, the same thing we call magnetic attraction, which, of course, is not magnetism at all, rather dielectric acceleration, but specifically, it is attributionally different. That attributional difference is, of course, one is point source, which is multiplicative. Yeah, you ever had your fingers smashed between su two super powerful magnets? Well, that same phenomena is no different than the phenomena we call gravity. Yeah, one is point source, the other one is non-point source. Yeah, mutual mass acceleration. Now, they're not accelerating towards one another, as I showed you in a video, when you actually see two magnets accelerating towards one another underneath the supercell. They're actually accelerating towards a null pressure point in the ether. Not accelerating towards one another, they're accelerating towards a null pressure point between the two. Gravity. Hold on a second, I'm going to do this for dramatic effect. <sighs> Gravity is not a force. Gravity, we'll say, well, and some of the better scientific papers will say, well, gravity is acceleration. But acceleration is like saying waves. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. Acceleration, that's like, well, that's it's accelerating. Like, but what's accelerating? It's accelerating. Like a car is accelerating down the street. Now that's actually a different type of acceleration. We actually talk about acceleration. That's actually the release of energy, like when someone steps on the gas pedal, they're actually burning gas. And they're, of course, initiating a force, which is driving the pistons and driving the drive shaft. That's actually a force, even though we conventionally refer to it as acceleration. But the acceleration and the phenomena that we call gravity, there's no force involved there. What's the opposite of a force? Increasing inertia and acceleration. Now, there's only two modalities of Mother Nature because Mother Nature is simple, but she's not simplex. Everything is force and motion or inertia and acceleration. Gravity, or the phenomena that we call gravity, and by the way, I love the fact, and that's actually the only good thing about modern science that I actually appreciate, is that they have no clue what gravity is. Well, actually, some of them actually think that they do. They say, well, there's uh, gravitons. <laughs> this is pretty good. Virtual photons or gravitons are occurring between two objects. It's... it's <laughs> it's the exchange of virtual photons. Completely farcical. That is a fundamentally appreciably no different than saying unicorns or leprechauns are not jumping back and forth between two objects and causing them to accelerate towards one another. No. There's nothing going on there other than ether torsion. Yeah? Now, just imagine it, if you will, just for a second. And by the way, there's no such thing as bent or curved space-time. The only time that uh, Nikola Tesla lost his mind, not literally, was railing against Albert Einstein's um, quantum uh, IDH. Because when you r remove uh, the ether, you have to replace it with something else. You replace it with uh, particles and curved space-time. Now, space has no properties, and this is quote-unquote from Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla is right, and time is not a thing. Time is only a measure of magnitudes. There's no such thing as curved space-time. It's completely ridiculous. Sure, that's what's happening. They'll actually, uh, scientists will actually give uh, physics demonstrations um, in the colleges. And what they'll do is they'll take a trampoline 
or like a stretchy piece of fabric, and they'll put like something heavy in the middle, and it will bend down the fabric. And look at that, students. Like when I drop a ball on this uh, curved fabric that's curving in towards the, you see that it's curving in. It's exactly what we see in comments and asteroids. It's curved space time. <laughs> Now, superficially, that seems uh, fundamentally halfway intelligent, but of course it's not. It's ether torsion. Just as two objects are not mutually accelerating towards one another, they're accelerating towards a null pressure point in counter space, because there's only two dimensions, spatial and counter spatial. And there's, of course, the dimensions of force and motion, inertia and acceleration. The only thing that actually gives uh, reification to space is, of course, the after effect of a divergent three-dimensional force vector, i.e. magnetism, because there's only capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity. Everything is either centrifugal divergence or centripetal convergence. But the phenomena that we call gravity is not something unique or different, but the phenomena is undeniable. I love it when someone leaves me a comment in, the co uh, comment in, the, in a video and they'll say, gravity doesn't exist. And I tell them, it's like, well, if you think gravity doesn't exist, then try jumping off of a tall ladder and see, you know, what, tell me what that is. The phenomena, of gra <laughs> the phenomena that we call gravity obviously does exist, but that's not a force. You know, why are so many books called gravity a force? Well, what is acceleration? When we actually say gravity is acceleration, that's not saying anything. That's like saying waves. Scientists love to talk about waves, but there's no such thing as a wave because a wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. Acceleration doesn't exist either. Acceleration is not what something is. Acceleration is what something or mutual things do. Now, when two masses accelerate, and they don't accelerate towards one another, that's what they're doing. But what is the acceleration based upon? It's based upon ether torsion. The same phenomena that... Fat, when people say magnet, let's just roll the clock back here a little bit and talk about magnet. When people say magnet, we'll say... What they immediately have in their head is the same thing the ancient Chinese and Greeks had in their heads, is that when they played with lodestones, they would actually talk about the field that surrounds the object that we call the magnet. That's the only thing that, that's a magnet. There's this field around it, like when you can bring metal objects close, it accelerates. <laughs> but it's not that the magnet is emitting anything, yeah? No. Because the magnet is a point source object, because what defines a magnet is not quantitative, it's qualitative. But because if this were a piece of, uh, of, uh, of neodymium iron boron, okay, before they actually turn it into a magnet, it is quantitatively 100% identical before it becomes a magnet as after it becomes a magnet. So what defines a magnet is undeniably, no opinions, hardcore fact, qualitative in nature. What's the quality of a magnet? Is that it's a point source object? Yes. The field around it is the torsion of the ether. When two magnets accelerate towards one another, this is, see, this is where humanity's been thinking this for thousands of years because of lodestones, yeah? And now we have powerful magnets. When two magnets jump towards one another, that's magnetic attraction. Well, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction because magnetism denotatively is the three-dimensional force vector of centrifugal divergence. Are you listening? <laughs> There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. The same thing we call magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism at all, is the exact same thing we call gravity. The only distinction is one is point source mutual mass acceleration, the other one is non-point source mutual mass acceleration. Yeah? Same distinction between a light bulb and a laser, 5-watt light bulb, 5-watt laser. Gravity is not a force. Gravity is an acceleration. But an acceleration of what? There's no such thing as an acceleration. It's like saying gravity, uh, it's like talking about waves. There's no fundamental difference in the logomachy. There's a great word everybody should learn, logomachy. There's no fundamental difference um, in talking about uh, waves than there is in talking about uh, acceleration. Acceleration of what, by what, and due to what? Due to what? Why are they accelerating? What is causing them to accelerate? And the answer, girlfriend, is ether torsion. The same field that is outside of a magnet is not being emitted by the magnet at all. It is ether torsion because it is a point source object. The only thing that fascinates humanity about a magnet is that its effects are ab extra to the device, right? Like when you grab something hot, you know, unless it's like super hot and it's emitting heat, 
You know, it's not hot until you touch it. Well, the field is ab extra to the object. That is what fascinates little kids and fascinated the ancient world about magnets for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, is that it has an effect ab extra to the object. Gravity is, of course, a phenomenon that is ab extra to the object or objects that are mutually accelerating. Yeah? There is no difference whatsoever between so-called magnetic attraction, which has nothing to do with magnetism, because if you take a superficial mind, and this, has occurred, this occurred thousands and thousands of years ago by the Chinese and the Greeks and others, and the Babylonians, is to, when they call them lodestones, they had other names for them, of course, but we know them as magnets. They accelerate, well, we know this is a magnet, there's a magnetic field around it, and two magnets accelerate, that's, that's magnetic attraction. Now, superficially, that seems halfway intelligent, but it's fundamentally, the devil is in the details. Fundamentally, that, of course, is wholly untrue. Magnetic attract. Am I repeating myself? Yes. The only reason I keep repeating myself on this point is because people don't get it. Magnetic attraction does not exist. Gravity, we could call it acceleration all we like, but acceleration of what, by what, and due to what. Ether torsion, the same thing that we call uh, magnetic repulsion, which is magnetism. The same thing we call magnetic attraction, which has nothing to do with magnetism. Yeah, all of these things are different ether pressure modalities because everything is ether pressure mediation. A field is either circular, longitudinal, or transverse and complex, as in the case of light, which is a coaxial circuit, longitudinal refractions and compressions along the dielectric, and transverse result, resultant, whether it be linear or circular polarization, transverse electrical magnetic phenomena resultant to the refractions and compressions along the longitudinal of propagation. But light's not an emission. When I say propagation, I use it conventionally because light is not an emission. Yeah. Nobody emits sound either. We actually set up a disturbance or perturbation in the air. Speed, the, we know about the, the speed of sound, but it's not an emission. It, they, the speed of sound is not the speed at rate at which sound travels, which of course varies depending on temperature and air density. It's the rate of propagation of the speed of the perturbation, the rate of induction uh, at which that, uh, that phenomena occurs, i.e. the disturbance or perturbation in the air. Light, uh, calling light a speed, of course, is fundamentally incorrect, but conventionally okay to say. But light doesn't propagate, of course. Light, uh, the speed of light is the rate of induction, the maximum uh, speed at which, and of course the speed of light or the rate of induction changes as it passes either through glass. By the way, if you pass light uh, through this, it will actually go down by about, I think about like 38%. This is a, a neat little uh, device that you, know, you can actually uh, shine a light through and of course it's very fundamentally gorgeous. When you actually uh, put a light source at the end of this, you know, it's actually slowing down by like 40% or slow, and then it quote-unquote speeds back up. You can never explain that with an emission or a photon particle, these arbitrary abstractions which have no basis in reality, because it changes because the rate of induction changes, because the medium of the, of the uh, perturbation changes. It's changing from air here, or even if this was a vacuum, into uh, this mineral here. I forget what this is. Not gypsum. This is... Uh, Oh, God. I, the name escapes me of this stuff, even though I know what it is. But uh, yeah, the rate of induction changes, but it changes again as it exits this. But when I say exits, it makes it sound like I'm talking about something moving from point A to point B. It's not. But everything is fields, and fields are not particles. You know, there's no such thing as curved space-time. You know, this uh, reification of space and time. This is the reason why Nikola Tesla said Einstein was a fuzzy-haired crackpot. There's no such thing as curved space-time. It's completely ridiculous. So-called gravity is an acceleration of the two masses, but the acceleration, of course, still doesn't explain what it is, because acceleration is just like talking about waves, and waves doesn't define anything either, because a wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. But the mutual mass acceleration towards the lowest pressure mediation of the ether torsion between the two objects that are mutually accelerating not towards one another but towards the null pressure point in counter space because that is the dissipation of force. Space and distance. Space is just the after effect of a divergent magnetic field. The dissipation of that force, they're, they're accelerating towards a null pressure point in the ether. I showed that to you last week underneath the supercell. Objects are not accelerating towards one another. Gravity is not a force. It's the total opposite of a force. Increasing inertia and acceleration. But increasing inertia and acceleration is always a move towards 
counter space. Space is the saying magnetism and saying force and saying space is really fundamentally the same thing. From the perspective of the absolute or, or absolute wisdom, there is no fundamental distinction between saying magnetism, force, and space. Fundamentally none. Because a divergent magnetic field creates space, but space has no properties. Anyway, I hope you like this video. How far I need to go down the rabbit hole without confusing people. I try to repeat myself on key important points so I can drill it in so people understand it, but... Mother Nature is very simple. It's not simplex, but it's not convoluted like the, uh, the quackery of quantum would have you believe. So, anyway, thanks so much. Lux e veritas. Let me know if you like these videos. You can always check out the description below and send me an email if you have any questions. Goodbye.